let's just um, generalize now generalize the derivation where we had the following starting point so remember we had h of t and this was our impulse response here and so the h of t was, was again so the h of t was a and then this was e2 minus bt and in the Laplace space this was h of s and that's a divided by s plus b. So this was our continuous domain circuit we had here. And so now what we got out here was our h of z and the h of z turned out to be a, so that's, uh, that's still the same, and then 1 minus e2 minus b z2 minus 1. So this was in the sample domain here. So this means we have a transformation rule transformation rule from continuous to sample domain from the continuous to the sampled domain and obviously here we have got our h of nt and this is an a e2 minus b and t in the sample domain. But the interesting thing is here that essentially a fraction like this is turned into a fraction which looks like that. And so the um, general ideas behind this is that um, essentially a pole at in this case here minus b turns into a pole at e2 minus b t and I've forgotten the t again so that's a minus b t here and so and so therefore we have a transformation rule or to make it so so a pole at b turns into a pole at e2 bt to get rid of this negative sign here. So if we are if we are having a having a pole here, so in this case this is at minus b. So if we're just setting this to zero here, um, then the pole is at minus b. Then this pole converts to e2 minus bt here in this case, or a pole at b turns into a pole at e2 bt. What do we mean with pole? Just to make this clear, that is what is meant by this here. So what is a pole? So h of s. So if we have something like a, and let's now let's write this with a negative sign here, s minus b. So pole means basically when this becomes zero and so and therefore the whole term essentially goes towards infinity here. So in this case here s minus b equals zero. So this means well, let's call this here s infinity that this that this s infinity here is essentially b. So we got a pole at B where so H of B becomes infinity. 
So let's recap the translation of poles now again. Translation of poles from the analog domain to the digital one. In this case here. And so so the um so we had our analog function h of s and this was a divided by s minus b so I'm using the negative sign here so this means so this here needs to become zero to become a pole and then the whole thing becomes infinity here so this means our pole here is at b yeah so that's our that's our pole and so then we know that our h of z this is at a and then 1 minus and then e to b that that 2 minus 1 so z is here needs to be a bit bigger because that's so the e to z 2 minus 1 and so that's our translation for that then again so this needs to be 0 and then the whole term needs to become infinity so in this case this means that we have e2 e2 b t z2 minus 1 and then this needs to be needs to be 1 so this means that the z let's call this here z infinity that this needs to be needs to be e2 b t because this gives us here the reciprocal value and then this cancels out and gives us a one so then therefore so while we're getting a pole like this here then our pole here looks like this so and therefore we have a translation rule how we translate from from analog to digital so that's our our analog function here analog function and this is our digital function here and this is how we translate these these um, transfer functions and with that we also have a way of translating our poles from the analog domain to the digital domain so if we have a if you have a pole in the analog domain at B, then in the digital domain we're getting a pole at um, E to B.